what ratios do we look at while investing in the banking sector? First thing that we tend to look at is the net interest income, which is essentially the amount of money the bank has earned uh, via interest, uh, via the route of interest on all the loans that they have lent out, minus any interest expense that they have incurred uh, via FBs and S, uh, SBs and RDs, right? In addition, there is other income that the bank tends to earn. This is the this might be investment income, this might be uh, forex income. Uh, this might be, uh, you know, fees that the bank has earned and all the likes. So these are two things that we tend to look at. This is not a ratio per se, but it helps us understand uh, where the bank is earning its money from. Uh, apart from that, we also tend to look at what is the amount of provision that the bank has been really taking. Uh, so uh, uh, this this is part of the, uh, you know, income statement. Uh, this basically helps us understand what is the stress that the uh, loans that the bank has lent out uh, is facing. If there is too much of stress or if the bank feel there is going to be too much of stress that the loans that they have given out is going to face and uh, people might not really repay these loans, uh, the provision might increase. If the bank feels it is all cool, uh, people are going to repay the loans uh, in a timely manner, the provision might decrease. So this is another thing. Obviously, the last item would be the uh, you know net income that the bank is earning. So this is as far as understanding the flow of the income statement is concerned. Uh, the balance sheet and the cash flow statement tend to remain the same uh, when it comes when it comes to other industries. Though so obviously the debt, uh, uh, you know, component for all banks tend to be very very high. Uh, last but not the least, what we have is the uh, valuation ratios. When it comes to uh, you know other manufacturing entities or real estate companies or the likes, we tend to look at PE ratio a lot. Whereas in case of banking entities, we tend to, PE ratio does not make too much sense. We tend to look at the price to book ratio. Uh, price to book ratio essentially uh, helps us understand uh, if you try to compare uh, the PB ratio between two banks, uh, obviously the lower the PB ratio, the undervalued the stock is compared to the higher PB ratio bank. Uh, what a P, PB ratio or a price to book ratio does is it offers a perspective of how the company is utilizing the funds which is more important when it com when, as compared to uh, what is happening vis-a-vis -vis the earnings of the bank. Uh, so a company which is obviously utilizing its funds very well uh, is, uh, is, is better compared to a bank that is not utilizing its companies very well, obviously. So which is why the PB ratio comes into picture. Yeah, and I think uh, you mentioned a very important point which I would like to highlight again is that uh, I mean, often there's this common uh, sort of misconceived uh, ratio that goes around that, you know, a higher debt equity ratio is actually bad and a lower debt equity ratio is actually low. But the whole construct of a bank is in such a way that it sort of shows the ability that, okay, if you have 10 rupees in equity, how much are you levering up? So there could be a possibility that someone has maybe 90 rupees of leverage and the debt equity ratio turns up to be 9 is to 1. But at the same time, what is really important is, is the bank able to sort of, uh, I mean, uh, pay the debts on time and running the shop more efficiently because, you know, the unlike other sectors or industries in banking, the input is money and the output is money. So then governance becomes very important. Now, how do you measure governance? There's not really a metric to sort of see. But another important thing is, you know, there are some banks and, you know, one can sort of go and check. Uh, banks that have maintained a very good track record investors are willing to pay a premium to buy those banks which is why their price to book ratios have historically remained very high whereas let's say banks which have had not a great track record and they have been patchy in earnings and you know there have been npa blow ups where uh, let's say the loans went bad uh, you often tend to see that the price to book has traditionally uh, always remained on the lower side so that's also something which investors can sort of look into uh, before they sort of take decisions in order to compare as to why does this bank trade at X multiple and why does this bank trade at X by four multiple, right? So that is a very uh, important sort of metric to give you an understanding of what's happened. Just uh, 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 like, you know, building on that uh, around corporate governance and the likes, one of probably one of the easiest ways to look at it or one of the easiest metrics to look at when we are talking about efficiency in terms of lending as well as corporate governance as the NPA ratios. 
Uh, usually every bank puts this out uh, when they are talking about their results, they put out these NPA ratios. Uh, and the general trend in India has been that public sector banks, uh, for obvious reasons, tend to have a slightly higher NPA ratios compared to uh, at least the larger private sector banks. So always look out for these ratios. Uh, first of all, the ratio has to be on the lower side. On top of that, the, the ratio has to be trending down, which means, uh, you know, the bank is not facing too much pressure on the amount that it has lent out. Uh, so that sort of ties up with whatever Saket has been talking about in terms of governance and uh, valuation and the likes.